Krishnal Patel. Today I will discuss about two cases of business and corporate law with my other team members. The first case is between Martin and the swimming pool company and the second case is Brew Expresso Coffee. Now I will discuss the first case where Martin was hired as a manager and he has the authority to sign the contract and collect the money from customers. However, some issues occur. While trading the business, Martin's misrepresentations to the customer regarding the construction of swimming pool to gain extra bonus on top of his salary. Secondly, he used some of the business money in his personal account and later on he opened his own construction business without disclosing any information to the company. Later on, some customer complained to the company regarding the dissatisfaction about the construction of swimming pool and some damages. The rule states that any company who has given the authority to their employees to handle the customers are liable to bear the cost of customers dissatisfaction and company can take the action against the employee. Now, now my second team member Akanksha will discuss the implications of law in brief. Thank you. Hi, my name is Akanksha Prabhakar Rao and here I'm going to describe about the rules which are applicable in this case. In this case, there are three kind of laws which are applicable. First is agent authority law, second consumer law, third law of fiduciary duty. In agent authority law, the company becomes liable to the customer for the damages and here Martin has authority to deal with the customer and the collection of deposit money on behalf of the swimming pool company. Under consumer law, both company and agent are liable to provide misleading information. Thirdly, law implies here is fiduciary duty of agent. In this, Martin works on behalf of the company, so under section 181, manager of the company acts honestly and keep all the transactions correct. In second section 182, it explains that the person should not do any misuse of his position and power. Thirdly, section 181, subsection 1, in this it states that a person should have good faith and work on the best interest of the company. So Martin has breached all these law and hence he is liable to the company for its financial and all other kinds of damages. The second case will be described and it presented by my other group member. Her name is Usha Nakarani. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Usha Nakarani. I'm going to discuss about second case. This case is about the new discovered low cost brew coffee where a person want to open small business only including his family members. There are some issues. What kind of business is he registered under ASIC? Is it public company, proprietary company or trust? According to its features. Moreover, he wants to name his company as ANZ Coffee to make his coffee recognized as Australian brand. Is there any particular law that applies in choosing the name of the company? There are some mandatory rules that needs to be followed while choosing the name of the company. First one is according to Corporation Act 2001, the features of proprietary company is a small family owned business. The second one is a company should recognize proprietary as private limited in its name and company should not have more than 50 employees who are non-shareholders. Last one is a company should have one director. Now I would like to call my four team member Zain. I will discuss further. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mohammed Zain, and today I am going to discuss about uh, the question about the questions which my previous member has raised in his presentation. So. As my team member raised the question, what should be the size of a um, company? According to the Corporation Act 2001, any small or big firm who want to open a family-based business, which only includes their family members as shareholders, are considered as proprietary company. ASIC can register new 
uh, Brio Espresso Company, uh, a proprietary company. So, after the first financial year, company revenue is 10 million and assets are 5 million, and it has uh, 20 employees. This structure uh, matches with small uh, proprietary company. So, Brio Company, uh, Brio Coffee will uh, be registered under AS. I see as a small proprietary company. However, after five uh, like after five years, uh, the forecast shows the company revenue will increase with 27, uh, 26 million dollars. Um, gross asset will be uh, thirteen million and will have more than sixty six employees. So at the end of uh, five year, the company will be converted as large proprietary company. Now, I would like to call my friend, uh, Saurav, who will discuss uh, about what, what will be the name of the con uh, company. My name is Saurav and my student ID is YEG3019. After discussing both of the cases, I'm going to conclude both of the cases and the important information that should be answered for you on behalf of the question that included in the case study. So, the conclusion of the uh, case study first, um, it should be according to the Cooperation Act 2001 and Asian Authority Law, company is liable to the customer for Martin's Act and repair of the damaged food. On the other hand, Martin is liable to the company under fiduciary law section 181 and section 182 to pay back the profit of the company. However, a company can take legal action as well against the Martin. Moreover, Martin is liable to the company under fiduciary law section 181 and section 182 to pay back the profit to the company. So this was the conclusion for the case 1 and the conclusion for the case 2 that is for the Brew Coffee Company and according to Cooperation Act 2001 and the Protection of Work and say regulation 1921 any company who wants to use NSEC word for commercial purpose to recognize as Australian brand need to take special permission from the Minister of Veterans Affairs. Moreover, the Corporation Act 2001 also explained further that property company must use short form private in the name of the company that is PT1. So if government give the permission to use the word NSEC then name of the company would be for example NSEC Coffee Private Limited. According to Corporation Act 2001 the new homemade brew express coffee will be identified as small proprietary company however in long run it can be converted as a large proprietary company as well. Moreover, it can use the NZEC coffee with permission of Ministerial or Australian government but need to add private in company's name because it is the proprietary. So it can be named as NZEC coffee private limited. So this was the conclusion for both of the cases. I hope we included and explained all of the answer and that relates to the case studies. Uh, on the behalf of my team members, I would like to thank all 